A major part of Red Bull's Formula 1 legacy will undoubtedly be its domination of the championship from 2010 through 2013. And while it's still searching for another title since then, there are many spectacular feats it has accomplished which its rivals simply come nowhere near. From demonstrations all over the world to hitching colour-coded caravans onto the back of Aston Martins at Zandvoort, Red Bull is F1's single biggest asset when it comes to taking the show to the people. And its most ambitious, crazy and sometimes seemingly impossible stunts take F1 cars to truly bizarre places. But which is the best? For the purpose of this list, we focus on the hardest to pull off and the most spectacular. That means excluding show runs. They're great and they've wowed crowds in El Marti, Beirut, Belfast, Bogota, Bologna, California, Cape Town, Hanoi, Hyderabad, Muscat, Santiago, St. Petersburg, Tokyo, Vienna and many more. But donuts in the street simply don't hold a candle to the entries here. Even an airstrip run with a fighter jet and a salt desert challenge didn't make this list. Let us know your favourite in the comments below and remember to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel but for now let's dive into the 12 craziest things Red Bull has done with an F1 car. Ok, we're sort of breaking a rule here straight away because this is technically part of a show run but it was so much more than just locking off a small part of road and burning some rubber. That this particular show run wasn't just confined to those traditional elements is what sneaks it onto the tail end of our list. David Coulthard, who you'll see several times in this video, drives around public roads, through cobbled squares and down a small strip by the harbour as he passes some of Copenhagen's greatest landmarks and also members of the public. A few years later, talk of a Danish Grand Prix around the streets of Copenhagen emerged and if that ever comes to fruition, which it hasn't so far, Red Bull can say it got there first. Number 11. Daniel Ricciardo's Rugby Scrum in 2016, Red Bull released a video of Daniel Ricciardo and an RB8 going up against an eight-man scrum from Bath Rugby. A specially engineered scrum machine and a rugby player-inspired flat nose for the RB8 were created to facilitate the face-off, with Red Bull's video even showcasing the intense heat from the car's engine and rear tyres and the players' bodies. What counts against this video slightly is that it took place on private property at the team's swanky training facility but that did at least throw up the very cool image of Ricardo sliding the car past the wild rugby players across the gravel. The first time we were properly introduced to the concept of a country-wide Red Bull road trip was when Coulthard explored Jordan in April 2016 ahead of a show run with Pierre Gasly on the banks of the Dead Sea. The desert run posed a major challenge for Red Bull as the intense heat took the engine temperature beyond 100 degrees and the car was sucking up sand and dust. And via the Amman Citadel to chariots and Roman soldiers in Jerash, a salt city mosque to the al Khazni temple in Petra, this had more than a touch of the spectacular to go with the logistical challenge and as Coulthard said at the time, I'd say of all the journeys I've been on with the team, this one has been the most epic. While longer cross-country trips would be explored in later years, Red Bull's 2011 takeover of Austin before the return of the United States Grand Prix took in lots of locations around the Texas city. And as each venue brought something different to the table, leading up to a spectacular dirt track lap of an unpaved circuit of the Americas, this could be considered the first time a simple show run was shunned in favour of more complex storytelling. DC's dirt road escape from the ranch has him being chased by a car, a quad bike, horses and a helicopter. And bonus points if you spot the failed attempt from one rider to lasso the car. Red Bull likes to use older generation cars for show runs because of the V8 engine's durability. But even this engine has its limits, which were tested in the Canadian winter. In temperatures of minus 10 Celsius, Red Bull's biggest problem here was avoiding the axles freezing and locking, so the priority was to keep the cars warm instead of cool. Sebastian Buemi was tasked with controlling the RB5 on ice, aided by specially produced tyres, with a run across a frozen lake and then a circuit that was mapped out loosely on the Montreal F1 track. It's not unusual for Red Bull to be able to briefly take over a major city, but when that city is New York, it's already a little different and when it involves clocking nearly 200 miles per hour in the Lincoln Tunnel, you see why this is on the list and why it places quite highly. 
One year after their dirt track exploits in Austin, Red Bull and Coulthard returned to America to promote the 2012 USGP and the F1 street track in New Jersey that was slated to be used the following year. With a Liberty Island backdrop, a drive through Liberty State Park, a sample run through the New Jersey course that was never realised and the Lincoln Tunnel Blast, Red Bull's project was a massive undertaking with a significant police presence. The 190 mile an hour run through the tunnel is the star attraction, but Coulthard cracking on through residential areas is not far behind. In 2018, Red Bull's F1 road trip concept evolved into an absolute monster. San Francisco, Monument Valley, Las Vegas, the Rocky Mountains and Miami Beach. It was truly worthy of the road trip name. The lengths Red Bull went to for this were intense. The desire for sunrise and sunset shots meant days sometimes started at 4am and ran until midnight. And in between there were still plenty of locations to hit to get the footage and operationally Red Bull sends a very small crew. There were also specific challenges to deal with on the car side. Jacking up the ride height wasn't enough for the beach running as the core surface was like running on sandpaper and shredded the tyres. All in all this was a massive undertaking from Red Bull and put an F1 car in not just one unusual place but many. It would feature further up this list but it gets docked a couple of places because although it's presented as Ricardo and Max Verstappen, Patrick Friesacker is doing the driving and we're a stickler for authenticity. Two title winning Red Bulls and months of work were required to realise four days of filming in which Verstappen and teammate Alex Albon travelled to Zandvoort via windmills, shipping containers, a greenhouse, the Netherlands seat of government and a beach. Temperatures were just over zero degrees in January and it was so cold when they were filming the scenes in Rotterdam Port that one of the starter motors broke and then the backup packed it in as well. So they had to craft a replacement quickly on site. Other parts of the road trip encapsulated a variety of the normal problems on these kind of events, including overheating while running at low speed, crowd control and checking roads for potholes and welding down manhole covers. It had its own problems too, such as filming the cars drifting through a live auction house and postponing the final day of filming by a month because of torrential rain. It's the sheer quantity of tricky locations and the challenges that had to be overcome that put Red Bull's most recent exhibition so high on our list. It's been almost a decade since Neil Yarny and Red Bull tackled the Himalayas, a feat we had forgotten about entirely before compiling this list. Offering a phenomenal view at around 18,000 feet, the Cardinglar mountain pass quite literally took Red Bull and its demonstration team to new heights. Red Bull needed to take oxygen bottles as the crew battled altitude sickness and the reduced air intake for the engine, down around 20%, meant the car was barely keeping alive. But Yarni coped well despite the first snow of the season falling and a road that was so potholed that the final few kilometres had to be abandoned and completed on the back of a truck. But given that happened at around 18,000 feet, we'll let it slide and afford the Himalayan heroics a similarly high place in our rankings. David Coulthard doing donuts on the helipad of the Burj Al Arab Hotel are probably what most people think of when they think of Red Bull putting an F1 car in crazy places. Named the seven star spin project, the nauseatingly high feat claims the third step on a podium of bonkers ideas from Red Bull. And the consequences had this stunt gone wrong is part of why it ranks so highly. Rigorous tests had to be undertaken on the ground and on the helipad to test its surface for weight tolerance and grip and there was a concern that winds greater than 10 miles per hour would force Red Bull to cancel a run that it described as one of the scariest it has done. Everything about this shattered preconceptions about what an F1 promo could be. The car was transported by helicopter so the damn thing was also airborne before reaching the almost 700 foot high helipad for Coulthard to do his donuts. And when DC hammers the throttle it's a heart in mouth moment for those involved but also those of us that are simply watching the end product from the safety of sea level. What do you do if you've conquered the art of the Formula 1 pit stop? Conduct one in zero gravity. Aided by the Russian Space Agency and at 33,000 feet on board a cosmonaut training plane, Red Bull's mechanics and its car experience weightlessness lasting around 22 seconds. These are called parabolas, where the plane climbs at a 45 degree angle, then falls at 45 degrees as well. One mechanic described the experience of dealing with this phenomenon as Bambi on ice, and another headbutted the front wing with their helmet. 
The exercise required around 80 parabolas, putting the personnel through an extremely physical challenge. Preparation included a styrofoam mock-up set and a week's worth of flights, and Red Bull picked the RB1, its 2005 car, because it was smaller than its successors. With around 22 seconds of zero gravity to play with, filming each part was limited to 15 seconds to ensure the car and equipment could be rapidly secured before the period of weightlessness ended. No wonder this challenge stands out as Red Bull's most technically and logistically demanding. The men in charge of running Red Bull's cars on these projects admit they don't quite know how they pulled this one off, and that combined with the sheer spectacle of an F1 car tackling a ski slope means a kitzball run locked down the number one slot very early on when we were putting together this list. On day one, the car only managed 20 feet out of the garage before sinking in the snow. Overnight, some snow chains were made locally and Red Bull spent the next night modifying the car to fit them, such as taking off the brake ducts and trimming the floor. Even once it became possible, the prospect of Verstappen attacking utterly unsuitable terrain for an F1 car was quite dicey. Red Bull's support team coordinator Mark Willis said of the prospect, The first time he had to drive off the edge of the mountain down the bottom of the ski slope, I was hesitant about sending him. It was very daunting watching him head over the edge, hoping he was going to come back. But come back Verstappen did, and in front of 3,500 spectators he committed to an alpine run like no other. The setting, the conditions, the surface, the wow factor, this one simply has it all, edging out the zero gravity pit stop with a slim victory based on how spectacular the end product was. So that's our ranking of the craziest things Red Bull's done with an F1 car. Let us know your favourite or any we've missed in the comments below. And remember, if you enjoyed our countdown, please give the video a like and subscribe to our channel.